Hello and welcome to another E4Clicks Project Estimator training video. Today we're going to look at how to add line items to your estimate. All right. So we're going to see how to add a line item from a pricing guide. We're going to see how to add multiple line items at one time. We're also going to see how to customize a line from a pricing guide and add that to your, the estimate. Okay, so let's jump right in here. We are going to be working inside of the 2016 RS Means Building Construction pricing guide, but the process is going to be the same regardless if it's RS means or some other pricing guide, whether it's trades, IDIQ, alternate guide, um, the process is going to be the same, okay? So we'll walk through um, each one of those and kind of get an idea how to do that. So if you don't remember how to maneuver through the guide, search through the guide, um, set up the pricing as you want to, please go look at some of the last few videos because they kind of prepped us all to this point where we're able to add line items to our estimate, have the pricing right, and find the right line items, all that kind of good stuff. So those will give you that detail in there. We're going to jump from this point and go forward. So we're going to use a little bit of all of that. Let's go over to the index and let's go find some nylon carpeting and add that to our estimate. Okay, so let's say, for example, that we want to do 20 ounce, 28 ounce nylon level loop carpeting. All right, we're going to put some carpeting. Um, we're going to rip out some carpeting and some ceiling tile, put in some new carpeting, some rip out the cove base, put in some new cove base, just do a couple of different things and finishes here. So no real scope. Mostly I just want to focus on adding line items, okay? So we found the line item that we want, and now we're going to add that to our estimate. All right, as we hinted through, there's going to be three different ways here. Let's focus on the first one, and that is just straight up finding a line item and adding it in. How do you think we would add this line item to our estimate? If you said right click, you are on it, right? So we're going to see those same three options that we kind of talked about right up here in our three uh, first uh, menu options. Okay, so the first one says add currently highlighted line item to the estimate. All right, now we can see that the hot key there is just hitting the enter key, right? So just hitting the enter key. We can also learn here that we can just double click. So this is basically just selecting just like we would anywhere else in any of our line items um, in any of, of using E4 clicks. All right, so we could double click, we could right click and choose add, or we could hit the enter key. All of these will get us the same result. So since we've right clicked, we'll go ahead and add the currently highlighted item. This brings up the update line item details window and allows us to put in some information but keeps us from touching other information. When we add a line item from a guide, what we're going to do is we're going to keep the integrity of that guide. So what we can do in that case is trust that everything all the information, the pricing information, the description, all of that is exactly how it was published by the data provider, in this case, RS Means. So there are some contracts out there who need to know contractually that nothing has been changed because they use it as a unit price book or something. So that's why we keep the integrity for you. So let's take just a quick glance and look at some of these information that's on here, so some of these items. So there's the item number, there's category, there's the description. Okay, we could also see the guide there. We can see some other information. We can see the pricing information along the right side. We see unit, and once we put in a quantity, we'll see the extended. We can see some of the different settings for that information. And then we can see the guide source. In this case, it's the 2016 RS Means Building Instruction. Notice here there's no city cost index integrated into the item. So this is the straight up bare pricing that you would find in the guide. If we wanted to integrate a CCI, we would change that in our settings. If we want it, but we'll probably just put it as a totaling component and put it on top of our whole project in this case. Okay, but there's just some information. A lot of that, most of that we can't touch. The stuff we can touch, let's go through. So we can go and put a straight up quantity. We can just put in a quantity, click the OK button, and be done at that quick. Or we could add more information to tell a bigger story. So let's say our room is 20 by 20. 
So I'm going to say 20, star 20 here in the takeoff field. When I leave that field, either by clicking out or pressing the tab key over on the left-hand side of your keyboard, what that's going to do is update the quantity field for us. Okay, so the takeoff formula, I don't know if you noticed or not, but it's going to be just like Excel without the equal sign because it's always a formula. So I didn't use an X to multiply, I used a star. So if you have a number pad on your keyboard, if you stay right there, you'll probably do really well. All right, and we can always use the help button and some of our other references to give a little bit more information on how to use that field. But if you kind of remember, it's going to be a lot like Excel without the equal sign, you'll probably do pretty well. Now, I put 20 times 20. I was thinking in feet, so I don't know about the rest of you, but here we can see that the extended unit of measure, the unit of measure from the pricing guide itself, which we're not going to be able to touch, we can see it's read only, is square yards. I was thinking in square feet, not square yards. So what we can do here is come and change a user unit of measure to make it a little more user friendly for me. So I'm going to click in here and use the square foot because that's what I was thinking in. So now our 400 square feet is going to be translated automatically for us to 44.44 square yards. All right. We also could have put divide by nine if we wanted to, but this is just nice. Now we can also put in some notes in here if we wanted to. Okay. So we could say uh, this is the new carpeting. Obviously this one might be a little bit um, obvious here, but this kind of just shows you what we're doing by using this note field. All right, hopefully that makes sense on the, what this update line item details window is, right? All the information is there for us. We've just got to give the key pieces that could be different from line item to line item, estimate to estimate. When we click OK, this line item will be added to our estimate back there. Okay, so it's not going to show up by moving this window or what we call single threaded, but what that means is we have to close the book to be able to for this window to refresh, and then we'd be able to see that this line item was added to our estimate. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna actually go back and forth between the guide and the estimate several times here. Normally, I would just keep the guide open and trust that everything was going in, but for the purposes of showing you what's going on, we're gonna do that. So I'm gonna hit the hot key to open up the default guide, insert key there, and let's go back and add a couple more line items. This time, we wanna use our second option, which is to tag multiple things and add it to the estimate. I'm gonna to go to the beginning of division nine. I'm gonna page down here a little bit, and we can see selective demolition of ceiling. So let's grab a couple of things here. Let's go, let's demolish the sentence of ceiling, the sended, suspended ceiling, and let's include the system. So what we can do over here is come over and use our mouse, of course, to check that. We call it tagging. Um, inside of E4Clicks. We've got a whole tagging menu that you can see there. So we can tag and untag, and we got some cool stuff there. I'm going to use the hotkey most of the time. When flip is going to, if it's tagged, it's going to untag it. If it's untagged, it'll tag it. I'm going to use this quite a bit. So this is, the hotkey is the space bar. What I like to do sometimes is use my arrow keys on my keyboard, and that way I can see exactly which line item I've got highlighted. So say we're going to do this carpet bonded, and then when I hit the space bar, it'll flip the value. In this case, it was untagged, so it tagged it, and then it's going to drop me down to the very next line item, and I could keep going if I wanted to. Okay. Now, the reason I chose these two specifically is because they have the same takeoff, the same quantity. Okay. The ceiling and the floor are basically the same area, so if I want to add multiple line items to my estimate and put in common information, this process we're walking through here could be a very good way to do that. You could also, if you don't want to quantify as you're going along, you could also tag all bunch of items and then paste all of those in at once with no information and then you could work from the estimate and walk through and quantify each one. We see people do that too for sure. All right? Which way works? Either Any of them. So do it you want to okay all right so how do we add these two items to the estimate if you said right click that's awesome and I'm gonna purposely right click on one of the items that's not tagged 
okay? Which option do we want to choose? We want to choose paste tag line items to the estimate. If we chose the top option, it would actually add whatever's highlighted, even though we have stuff tagged. So you could tag stuff and then move throughout the book. So you can go back and forth um, and use these interchangeably, which is nice. Um, so we want to make sure we get the paste tag line items to the estimate. Okay, if we click on that, it's going to open the pasting tag line items window, all right? And here, we can't see the stuff that was kind of grayed out last time. What we can see is all of the stuff that we could touch last time, right? So, we want to go through here, and I'm going to do 20, star 20 again, and I press tab. And then what that's going to do is give us 20. Now over here, the unit of measure is telling us that it's already in square feet, so we don't have to go and change that. Last time we changed it, this time we don't. We could put in notes here that we're demo, demo, demolishing these two line items, but we don't need to do that either. Okay. So when we come down here, we can click the process button. That will add both of those line items and clear out our tags, and they'll be gone. Okay. Now I'm just going to prime this again one more time because I want to show you something. Sometimes people will tag this and they'll actually add it and they'll paste it. All right, so maybe they'll add it, they'll tag it, and then they'll add it. And then at the end, if you close the guide and we have something tagged, we'll say, hey, we don't want you to forget something you got tagged, would you like to paste this? And people will get nervous and click yes. What happens is you may double dip it. You may add the line item twice, okay? so. I'm going to cancel this out, but what we did is if you right click and add and then also paste it in because it's tagged, you'll get that item twice. So if you see it come in twice, just check that. You want to do either the top option or the second option, not both. Hope that makes sense for you a little bit. Now I'm going to close this guide and we can see that it's added those two line items. Okay, so we can see there's the two 400s that came in. And we can see the takeoff. I don't know if I showed you this. When we added this in here, you notice how the quantity was in the square yards? Down here, we can see the full line item, full description. We can see the notes that we had put in. This is the carpeting. We could show you the takeoff as well as the conversion to go from square feet to square yards. So it's just some nice information that's included. And as we highlight each one of these, we'll see the information for whatever's highlighted on these read-only gray panels on the right and the bottom. Okay, so I'm going to jump back into the book again and this time let's use the third option, find a line item in the guide, customize it and add it to our estimate. So I'm going to hit control I, I'm going to go to resilient base, okay, and I want to find some resilient code base. So let's go find We'll, we'll, I, let's do this one. Let's do four inch vinyl cove base. Okay. So if we look here real quick, we can see that the material cost is a dollar twenty one. Okay. Let's say the rest of the line item is great, but we know in this specific case that we're ha putting in super duper special um, cove base, and we want we know the exact unit price for that, and we've got to buy that special. Okay. So let's go ahead and right click on the item and use the third option, so create custom line item. Create custom line item is very handy. Before I do that, let me just show you a couple of things. See how this is a header? There's no uh, checkbox here. So if I right click on this, I can't add it. Add, I can't use the top option because it's not an end line item. It doesn't have any pricing information. However, I could still add it as a custom and that would let me put there in and put any kind of pricing information I want because I'm customizing. All right. We also have, um, you'll see different modifiers that RS Means includes in the book. These you'll notice are have a little bit of a background highlight as well as italicized. They also do not have a checkbox. We could add those in the same way by right clicking and using the create custom line item and that would allow me, you to go through that. All right, so check out our modifiers and adjustments video, and that'll show you how to work through those. Okay, we did a whole video on that just so you could focus on it. Okay, so let's come up here, and let's get back to what we were doing. So we want to add this 4-inch vinyl cove base, but we want to customize it 
before we add it. So we're going to create a custom line item, okay? And that'll open up again, the update line item details window. This time, we can see that a lot of this information that used to be read-only is now editable. So we could come through and change this, okay? In this case, we were talking, we wanted to change the material cost so because we know what that material cost is, okay? Let's say we know the material cost, and the material cost is $1.84 per linear foot. So now we've changed that information, and we could go to town and fill out the rest of the information. Okay, one quick thing to note here before we leave here, before we quantify, is some of these different settings over here may need to be looked at. Specifically, if you are on a unit price type contract and you need to know the difference between a price line item, maybe it came directly from a pricing guide, and a non-priced item, this is uh, one of those settings that you'll want to verify and check. So maybe in this case it's non-priced. Okay, we're still going to let you know um, that it came from the 2016 build of construction, but that it has been customized, okay? So we've lost the integrity of the book, and we'll identify that, but still let you know where it came from, and then that now that we're customizing it. Something could be different than a published pricing guide. Our room, I think, was 20 by 20, so we're going to go around the room now. This is a linear footage, right? We're going around the base of it, right? So the perimeter, so I'm going to do 20 by 40. 20 by 4, which will give us 80 linear feet. And I could add a note in here. Maybe I know that this was ABC flooring is where I got the quote. Maybe put some information on there, who I got the quote from, that kind of stuff where I'm putting that material cost in. Okay? So you can use that information however you'd like to. So we can check through, verify, change any of this kind of stuff, and then we can do that. So I'm going to click OK, and that's going to add it to our estimate. I'm going to close the book again, and now we can see that here's our vinyl cove base. Okay, from ABC flooring, 20 by 40 is 80. All right, now we can see by looking at the guide details here that this is a custom line item. Another quick way that we can look through and find those is by our pricing guide filters. So if we click on RS means, we can see that those three are from RS means. If we click on custom, there's a quick way to see, oh, there's my custom one. Go back to all, we'll see all of those. All right, so I know we did covered quite a bit of stuff there and added several different ways. Again, th we focused on an RS means BCCD, but this process is the same regardless of the guide that we've got, okay? So hopefully that helps you out. Hopefully kind of leading through now, putting all these videos together and getting some good work out of you now, all right? so. Um, as always, please check out the other videos. Go back ones you need to see again. Keep pushing forward through the list. If you need anything at all, give us a holler. Uh, we hope you have just a fantastic day. Thank you so much.